Hey, I hope I'm live now. Sorry about being late. Just getting everything set up here. Just waiting to see that a couple of people come online. Oh cool, yeah, now I can see there's three people already watching. Nice. Sorry for being late, I had some trouble getting my webcam and microphone set up here with the browser. Had to switch to Chrome. Yeah, just say hi in the comments just so you can see that someone is out there speaking to an empty space here so please please introduce yourself i'll do the same in a, in a second hey there tap chief team Hey there, Katika. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yeah, I'm I'm Marcus. You probably saw that already on on the announcement. Um, I'm an engineering manager at Buffer. Buffer is a completely fully distributed company. We don't have an office. We're around um, ninety people at the moment, and um, yeah, we're really split from Australia to the west coast of uh, the US. So we're, we're spread across the whole world. And um, yeah, we do, we do quite enjoy it. So hopefully today I can share, um, can share some thoughts around how we work, um, what I think of um, remote work in general. Um, I've been working remotely since basically 2011. And um, I started at Buffer in 2015, so almost five years ago. Um, for the most of the time, I was kind of developing apps. And then at Buffer, so over three years ago, I started to manage a distributed team too. And yeah, I've been speaking, writing about uh, virtual leadership and since recently also coaching on it. So um, yeah, I hope that I can share some of my thoughts today with the questions I already have here and see if you all have any then later in the live QA section. Just see if there's um, a few more people arriving here. Let me see. Cool, so, so I'll wait a bit longer. Maybe you can post in the comments um, where you're at and, and what you do. It would be interesting to see. Yeah, what else can I tell you before we get started with the questions? Um, yeah, I, oh yeah, where am I at? I'm uh, in Munich, Germany right now. And um, yeah, with all the, the things happening around the world, I'm basically stuck here in my flat for the past three to four weeks. I hope you all out there safe at home, staying at home and um, washing your hands. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm here in Germany. Sometimes I'm also in Italy because my wife's from there. So I do travel quite a bit here in Europe. Yeah, just let me know in the comments where, where you're from and what maybe your position is, just so I get an idea of what the audience is like. Hey. I know it's pretty late for you in India or right it, i think it's 9 30 or something like that or nine i am always bad at time zone math <laughs> a 
think I can probably start with um, some of the prepared questions that I got sent over by the Tab Chief team. Um, and then I have a stack of questions here from all of you that sent in some questions that I can, yeah, see how many I can get done. And then we leave some time at the end for um, a live QA. Oh, it's 7 p.m. Okay, it's not too late. So that's good. Nice. Um, just to, your evening is just starting right now. <laughs> cool. Um, well, there's a few people arriving, so that's nice. Um, I think if I start with the initial questions, that should be fine. They can probably check the recording later for the, for, for the intro. Um, yeah, let's just, let's just give it a start here. Um, so you'll probably hearing me talk about various themes that I mentioned almost in every question. Um, and we can also dive into that in the life QA, but they are for me like the most essential ones. And I structured the questions I got beforehand, um, in a way that it makes sense for me to go through them, um, in terms of like easiness of the topic. And the first one is probably also, um, an important one right now where everyone is kind of forced to in a way to work from home and um, just, you know, talking about how basically you can set up your home, how you can work effectively from home and how you can also unblock from home. I think those are very important topics. But before I dive into that answer, I also wanted to say that right now it's kind of more of an emergency situation where um, a lot of people are working remotely right now from one day to the other and it's not it's not the same, right? It's not the same as setting up your team as a remote team. So just wanted to put that disclaimer out there that um, all the advice I'm saying, you have to take it with a grain of salt because um, some of it is basically built for, for a team that's focused on remote work that is starting out as a full remote team. And other things are more important when you kind of have an emergency setting and have to just, you know, start working from one day to the other from your home. So um, if you have any questions, how that, you know, what's the difference there, you feel free to put them in the comments. Um, yeah, so the question was, how do you know when to end your day and then plug off the work? And I added a part of another one um, uh, related to productivity dips, like when you kind of struggle a little bit with your productivity. Um, well, the first thing is to understand how you actually want to work. Like, are you a person that, you know, prefers to work from the home office, like I am here working from my home office, or are you a person that likes to prefer to be around people, you know? So just understanding what your, what your necessities are like. Do you prefer to work from home? Do you prefer to be alone? Do you prefer to work in the mornings, in the evenings? All of those things I think is important to understand before you really dive into remote work. Um, to unplug after work, it's important even to start with it, it's important to have kind of a routine, right? If you have a home office, like don't just go, don't just wake up and go straight to your office. Um, just try to, you know, build up into your day as you would do if you would go to an office, you know? So I don't know, that could be like waking up, getting, you know, walking the dog, if you have a dog or just taking a walk outside, um, having a coffee, reading, going into the room, kind of into your location of work. Um, so setting up those routines is kind of important to, understand how how you basically can work and make it work for yourself also when in the evening you want to unplug it's important to kill all the distraction distractions outside of that you have you know like on your phone you probably have slack installed or other work related things that might not be helpful in the evening to see so there's some bold moves that you can take for example um, you can put your phone into do not disturb mode right um, that's what I generally do from the evening until the morning. So every notification that comes in, I don't even see, so I don't get distracted. Also, sometimes, you know, just removing Slack from, from your phone is also a very good idea. I mean, you don't necessarily need it in the evenings and you don't want to need it. So just remove it, you know, and if you can't remove it, maybe just move it to like couple screens behind all the other important apps. So those are just some very basic things, but they sometimes help because if you work remotely, you work, you know, with all of your various devices and setting them up correctly is important. Another thing um, that's important 
for me uh, is also to master your ca cal calendar, right? Because the cal calendar for me is kind of like the office store to my office. That's where my team members and others see when I'm available and when I'm not and when I'm there and when I have free time and when they come basically into my office. So it's important to keep that calendar pretty clean and pretty in order. So what does that mean? For example, what I do is I put various blocks in there, like a block event in terms of, oh, this is my lunchtime. Those two hours or how many hours you have, they are like, I can't do any meetings there or I'm not available. If you have, you know, like a routine in the morning, the evening, put that time in two of like, okay, I'll start work at nine, I'll finish work at five or six or whatever that is, like put that into your calendar so other people can see when you are available or not. That's That's very important and, you know, can sometimes save you from, any additional meetings in the evening that you actually don't want to have. And there's, if you use Google Calendar, there's like a ton of functions where you can set up all the time zones where you can basically also, um, I think, set up your office hours, which automatically it would decline meetings outside of your own office hours. So there's various features in Google Calendar that already help with that. And there was another part that I kind of pulled into this question about productivity dips and what to do about them. I mean, they do happen as they do happen in offices too. Um, so just be honest and transparent about that with yourself even. Like you don't have to be a productivity machine of working, you know, 24-7. That's, that's not possible. And, you know, we all have those moments where we're just not product productive. And that's fine. Um, find out what works for you. You know, like if it's continuing, if it's like day after day, um, find what music helps you. Maybe there's a certain music that helps you to kind of motivate yourself or, you know, finding a different workplace. Maybe, you know, you kind of want to get out and work from a different space, a co-working space, a coffee shop or whatever there is, you know, maybe take a break. Or if it's getting too tricky, you know, you could even take a day, take day off and kind of relax for, for a personal day. So yeah, this is kind of the first question. Um, I see there's a few more people arriving. Hello there, glad to have you all. I asked everyone at the beginning to share where they're from and what they do. So feel free to just put that in there if you didn't see that. Um, so I just can see who's, who's online, where they're from and what they do. Um, I'm Marcus, just to repeat me real quick. I'm from Buffer, I'm an engineering manager. We're a fully distributed company and um, going to answer some questions today about remote work. So yeah, excited about that. All right, um, next question. How to get engineering teams to collaborate together? Kind of starting with the bigger one first. Um, well, I could probably talk an hour about this question, but I'm gonna take it a bit easy on you here um, and just mention a few more things. If we want to dive into more detail afterwards, we can definitely do so. Um, the most important topic or concept that I'm going to mention and that I'm going to mention over and over again is transparency. Um, and what does that mean, transparency? Um, well, transparency mostly in communication, right? In remote work, you don't see each other every day. You don't see, oh, this team is over there in the meeting room. Let's just go to them. You don't see that happening, right? So you have to be much more intentional about communicating well and out in the open so others can see what's going on. And this will help you with cross team co collaboration and especially communication, because as I just said, you know, like in an office, you see when another team is meeting or when people from another team are sitting together in remote, you don't, you maybe see some chats happening here and there, but you have to be very, very attentive to see those. But if the communication happens out in the open, and you and everyone else that is involved sees it, it's much more easier for you to dive in and actually understand what's going on and then collaborate with those people. So transparency here is very, very important. And I'm going to mention it over and over again, because, you know, with remote being so distributed, it's, it's, it's really key that you share what's going on. Um, another point that I always talk about is that you have to enable your team to actually do that, you know, collaboration with other teams or even in their own team. Um, it would have been cool to have slides, but it was a bit tricky to get to work. Um, but you probably all heard of an org chart, right? An org chart is kind of like, 
just the boss and there's you know another level and then there's various teams and other levels it's kind of like a very fixed stru structure that's actually not the best um ideal scenario for a remote team i'm not saying that org charts per se are bad it's just that very fixed structures are bad for remote work because they are very centralized so everything has to go through one person you know to go maybe upwards um, it's also very resistant to change and in general kind of defeats the sense of cross team collaboration or even just in team collaboration so what else can you do well, you can kind of see instead of an org chart, you can see it as kind of a network of points that you connect in various different forms, right? Um, why does that help? Because it decentralizes all of the communication, right? If someone is in India and someone else is in Germany and someone else is in the UK and someone else is maybe in the US, like if someone has to make a decision and like half of the team is not available they can't just wait all the time you know everything would just take much much longer so enabling that team to make that decision so decentralizing the authority is very important in that sense um, it also connects the people because if you have a network right there's various connections not just one flow there's like i could be connected to this person and all the engineers could be connected to each other in various forms right so it helps with that and it also creates an additional accountability because suddenly people have ownership of things right and then accountability forces people to kind of care about their work and also communicate to others collaborate with them much more as a manager there's a third thing that you can do to get engineering teams to collaborate together and it sounds very basic but um it's a very not like used term, but it's it, it's actually not that easy, and it's called delegation, right? Um, but delegating in the right way is not easy because, especially if you care about your work, um, and especially in remote work, um, you kind of want to show that you're helpful, right? So you want to take every opportunity you can to, you you can to help others. So if someone in your team comes to you and like, hey, we need to collaborate with this team, can you do this and that? You, of course, as a manager, want to say, yes, I can. I want to be helpful, right? But what you're actually doing is you're taking opportunities away from the team and which then ultimately doesn't allow them to grow because, of course, engineers also want to grow, right? So there's this kind of loop thing happening where if you always say yes to things that the team brings to you, then you're just basically taking off their work and you're not letting them grow and kind of lean into this connection and relationship building with other teams if it's related to you know cross team collaboration so yeah that's that's that question i hope it's clear so far feel free to just you know write in the chat if something isn't clear i'll, I'll see it and i'll try to engage in it all right so where's the next one here all right this is a more interesting one where the it asked me about um dealing with conflicts in remote teams right um, there was the addition with the productivity dips, but I moved that to the beginning. So bear with me here. Um, I mean, dealing with conflicts, it's probably similar to how you would deal with it in, um, co-located offices, but you have to be much more intentional about various things. Um, conflicts you can, I, I know about two like kind of types of conflicts. There's like the relationship, personal conflict and, um, they're more like task conflicts, like about work or anything related to that. In remote work, I have the feeling, and I think that's also what research shows, there's more conflicts around task related things, not so much about relationship because the relationships are also important that people engage in that much, much more. Um, important things here is setting expectations in remote teams is very important. You know, like what do you expect from something either from, um, you know, like a person when they want to grow so have a career framework or um whether that's a project related question or conflict you know like be sure that all the expectations are out there so that if conflicts come up they are like easily solvable because you have everything that's you know already cleared out beforehand um also team bonding you know and activities always help to just let the team not even come to the point where conflicts will come up a lot or you have to come into it to solve those problems so um just you know highlight that with your teams that relationship building inside your teams even individually is very very important 
Um, again, transparent communication is also important. You know, like if a conflict comes up, um, you would want that to come out in the open, right? You want the, the person to share it in maybe an open space to, you know, kind of make voice to that. So have a space where you can actually share what's going on, what's happening. And um, that's also, you know, very, um, how do you say, very non-judgmental, right? So have it like really an open space where someone can just shout into the void and tell them about the conflict without being judged upon it. Where there's also the, the concept of active listening then comes in, which is another big topic um, to kind of really feel for what's going on and understand the person where they're coming from. Yeah, sorry, I'm rushing through those, but um, it's quite a lot of content here. So I just wanted to be sure that I, I'll touch on those. Um, all right, next question. How to make everyone feel included and ensure that tasks are distributed equally? That was a very interesting question. Um, I think it's similar to the last question, right, about enabling the team and the relationship building. That's kind of a very foundation for all of that. Again, open and honest, transparent communication so that your team already knows where the other person is coming from, right? It doesn't help if people just speak behind their backs about them and if you have a very bad culture in your team. So, you know, engage with team bonding, help them to, you know, play games on meetings sometimes, just help them connect if you're really, really distributed and you never meet in person. Um, also, um, especially here, listening is very important. You know, let's say that you have a meeting where you decide on a project, who's going to work on what, be sure that you listen to what people are saying, who is speaking, and then also engaging those people that aren't really speaking up, you know? So be you as the manager, as the lead of the team, have to do a lot of jobs there to be aware of the situation and of what's going on, right? Um, there's another concept that I'll throw out to you and you can dig in because we don't have too much time to dig into all of those, but um, building psychological safety in the, in the team, you know, like having a safe environment is also very important here. And what does that mean? It basically means that you try to avoid artificial harmony, right? Artificial harmony in a sense that, um, you, as I said, you don't want people to kind of fake smile and then afterwards at home or to another colleague in the company, talk bad about a situation or talk bad about another person. So you try to avoid that because you want the open and the honest like communication, you know, set up pair calls with different team members. So they get connected with each other, personal time in meetings. So again, this relationship building is very, very important because then you can be sure that, you know, everyone feels heard. Everyone will, you know, bring something up and everyone can also get the equal amount of work if they want to, you know, it depends on engineers are at different spots. You have more senior engineers, more, you know, junior engineers. So, um, again, it's a, a lot of those answers will be related to communication. Okay. Last one for, for the prepared ones. Um, then we can dive into some of the, the, um, other ones. How to reduce approval cycles and feedback loops? Also an interesting question. I hate to say my first point on that is again, transparent communication. Um, I'll give maybe some more concrete examples here, um, how we do that at Buffer. Um, remote work lives by communication, right? If we're all distributed and no one speaks to each other, we would all just be freelancers sitting in different countries. So the communication part here is, is the key point and not just normal communication as you would do in an office, but also overcompensating that information, not just, you know, overflowing people with information, just pushing it out everywhere, just the same thing, but overflowing it with context, like really sharing everything you have related to that topic. So, you know, it talks about approval cycles and feedback loops. So if you have a PR or if you have a project that you need feedback on, share all your questions, share every context you have around that topic. So that person that's maybe, you know, waking up five hours later, doesn't have to get back to you. And then you have to get back again. So share everything that you can. And um, sometimes, you know, we think, ah, that person might know, might know that already. Still add it, you know, you never know, you never know what that person, you know, 
is in, what, what f mind they're in, what, what they're thinking about. So be sure that you share everything. And I kind of use, I call it my communication plan, but it's, uh, it's a very easy thing, right? Before every bigger communication, before you ask for feedback, before you ask for approval, um, I go through these steps, prepare, you know, write down, okay, what, what do I want the other person to understand? What is the goal? What's the outcome of this, you know, feedback? I want to understand, you know, where this and this goes and you send that over to the designer. So be sure that you know what you want from it. Prepare everything that you have in terms of information and questions, right? Then write it together, send it over and be sure, you know, sometimes written is great, but maybe some people like to have it in a video. So maybe record a video and send that over in a video format where you have to show, you know, a certain prototype or whatever. So adapt the medium to, to your message. And then after that send, don't just leave it there. Wait for it, wait that the person's, you know, reads it, watches it, and then listen for feedback. If the person has follow up or so, be sure that you really listen what they're asking for and then, you know, evaluate and correct. So in that way, you can try to keep feedback and approval cycles slow. It depends, of course, if your team is really fully distributed as ours, sometimes, you know, it happens and then you have to adapt. But um, yeah, just try to follow a process and then iterate on that. And I think the preparation phase is, is the very, very key phase there. Cool. Um, yeah, those were the, the prepared ones that I got sent over quite a while ago. So now we can dive into some other ones that you all sent in through the forum. Um, if there's any specific one that you all want me to dive in, um, let me see. All right. Oh, I see one there that I think was on the list. Tips to encourage self-management and over-communication. Yeah, um, maybe we can do that one first. Uh, I know it's not live QA, but this was, I think, on the list. Um, yeah, self-management. I mean, you have to be, you have to train that a little bit if you're not good at it. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. What helped me, especially when becoming a manager, but that works for basically everyone, is understanding a lot about yourself. Um, how do you work? You know, like what makes you tick? And a very basic thing that sounds easy is um, keeping a journal, um, whether that's, you know, digitally or analog on a like a notebook and writing things down. Even if it's just, you know, a, a couple of words every day, it doesn't have to be like a real journal, but just writing down, okay, today I did this, today I want to do this, or today this worked out really well. That helps you to kind of understand a little bit of what you do, how, you know, your time flies by, what you actually get done in a day and how you actually like to work. So that, that is something that really helped me when, um, when I started out, um, managing people, because that was the moment I had to really understand, you know, okay, how do I do this now? Um, so that's maybe one tip that I can give around self management and then Probably a lot of the things that I already mentioned, you know, um, be sure that you build up your routine in the morning and in the evening, be sure that you have maybe a, diff a, a spot where you work, that is your work spot. Um, you know, be, be sure that you communicate when your times are, when your, you know, lunchtime is and that you stick to that. Um, also be aware, you know, all your devices will receive emails and Slack notifications. So be sure that you turn those off if you don't want them. So I think all of that goes into self-management, but before you have to understand what do you want, you know, what, what is your way of working and tips to encourage over communication. Um, I mean, I think I answered that a little bit in the question before, just to be sure, um, over communication doesn't mean that you have to always say the same thing over and over again. That doesn't help, but be sure that, you know, you have a plan, write the process down, maybe for, you know, whatever it is that you're working on, uh, maybe let's say PRs, um, be sure maybe you have a, a, a template where it says, okay, share all the context, what are the questions, what is, you know, unclear, put that in there so that everyone uses it and shares all the context. That's the over communication that you want. So. Um, that could be something to try very easily, you know, using templates in terms of emails, even, or docs or PRs to kind of enforce a certain, a certain process. Cool. Uh, anything else in the chat? 
Oh. No, cool. Then I can maybe go into some that were sent in and um, I'll stop maybe a bit early so we can do some live questions if there are any. Um, so what do we have here? Um, as an individual, how do you get out of a rut, rut when working remotely? That's a good one. Um, we had that a little bit with the productivity, but I can share some things that I do already. It will happen. So prepare for it. Um, sometimes I just go out for, for even just a 15 or 20 minute walk um, with my dog or just listening to something or even just listening to nothing, just doing a walk helps me. Um, when it's really, you know, a hard day or when I really can't focus, sometimes I even do a personal day, you know, like maybe taking a Friday off or Monday off just to, you know, try to relax, recharge my batteries and then dive in, you know, into, into work again. And if it's related to kind of like, I feel stuck in here, especially not at this time, I can't, but, um, if I can go out, I would go, you know, maybe work from a or a co-working space or maybe a coffee shop. I like coffee. So, you know, sometimes Fridays in the mornings, I just go to a coffee shop and work somewhere else that gives me different energy and that, you know, helps me to kind of um, refresh in my, my work routine. That's what I would do. Um, all right, next one. How to, how to ensure everyone in the team is getting enough time to unplug and relax. <laughs> that, is of course a tricky one, especially if you have a distributed team where basically someone is online 24 seven, right? Um, what I do there is, you know, the first thing lead by example. So you as the manager or the lead have to be the person that actually shows that, you know, Hey, I'm off at six or at seven or at five, whenever, and I don't come online and write another email at 8 PM, you know, like things can wait until the morning. So you have to have to lead by example and show that, you know, that's how I, expect you all to behave too. So um, if you work and you write an email or a message in Slack at you know midnight, then others see that and they're gonna expect, oh wow, do I have to do this now too and be online all the time? So very important for, for leads and managers. Encourage them to disconnect, you know, like if I, I have a teammate in my team in Taiwan and sometimes because the team is very, you know, in the US, she, also is online at her six, her seven, her eight, her nine, her 10. And I say like, Hey, it's time to leave. You're, you're online already for the whole evening. Like, please, you know, like things can wait until tomorrow. So encouraging people to disconnect. What worked for us too is, um, time zone buddy. So my manager, she, she told that story of like, she always wanted to work longer and longer. And she, um, asked someone else was in the same time zone to say, or even in a time zone a bit earlier to say like, um, listen, when I'm still online in your 4 p.m., that would be my six or seven. Please tell me to look off because, you know, it's done for me. So that, you know, he having the accountability there is, is important as you would have in an office. You know, when people leave, you see them leave. That's kind of replacing that. Um, yeah, let's see. What else do we have here? Uh, OK, sorry, just to live questions. Uh, I only see I, one I already answered, right? The tips to encourage self-management and over communication. And then there's another one here. Um, so I've been working remotely for the past two weeks now. It has been an interesting experience. Although my productivity has improved, I found it hard to separate my work life and personal life to often end up thinking about work all day. How do you stop that from happening? Yeah. I mean, I, I mentioned that already <laughs> in the almost two last questions, right? Um, you have to find a way to, you know, turn that off. And I mean, if you would go into an office, your work would also be there, right? If you're at home thinking about it. So try to make the place where you work, not your living room, or maybe, you know, try to not make it your, your bedroom or your kitchen table. If you can try to find a dedicated space that even now in this emergency, you can make kind of your office nook, right? Even just temporary, try to, you know, shut it off so that when you leave that spot, you force yourself to disconnect. Um, of course you can't shut off your brain and say like, okay, now it's not this mode again. Um, but having this office nook really helps whether that's, you know, wherever that is in your house or in your apartment, try to find a space that 
it's not the sofa where you sit all day on and even in the evening when you watch TV or something or read. Don't try to stay there. Try to, you know, be in a place that's kind of only dedicated for work, even if it's just temporary. And then take breaks. That's important. And in the evening, you know, shut down your laptop or your computer, like close it, leave that office space and then do something else. Have a routine that that you do something afterwards, you know, take a walk, cook something, listen to music, play music, whatever your hobbies are. Try to do that after your work is done. Trust to get into a different mindset, right? Don't just sit there and continue to be on your computer for the rest of the evening, because then of course you'll think about work, you'll fall back into Slack, you'll fall back into your tools because that's where your work happens, right? So just try after, you know, you're done with work in the evening to do something else, at least for a short amount of time that you kind of force your brain to switch in a different mode. That's that's how I would try to, to solve that problem. And I know that right now, be aware that it's a it's a very different situation with everything going on around the world. So be aware that that might affect you too and that you won't be as productive and that, you know, everything just becomes kind of a bit longer and you still think about, oh, I wasn't productive. So also be kind to yourself that this is not a normal situation, you know. So, um, yeah, I hope I hope that helps you. Let me know if, if I answered your question there. Um, cool. I don't see the message from Kartika. Um, if someone can post that message, that question again from Kartika, I don't see that. I see, yeah, no, I see the last message from Kartika was 7 PM. So if you all can, um, maybe post it again, that would be great. Cool. Um, okay, let's continue. What do we answer? Um, so maybe, yeah, let's, let's do this one. How to encourage async communication. Um, so you probably read that on some blog posts or heard me even say it. I don't remember, but there's two main ways to communicate in a virtual team, right? There's synchronous communication, what we're doing right now, video calls, um, and there's asynchronous communication. Asynchronous communication is focused more on things that are written down or are recorded that kind of get transmitted, you know, in a delayed form. That's the whole async part. It's kind of delayed communication, right? So um, how, how to encourage that? Um, I think right now with everything going on um, with this emergency around the world, it's important to lean a lot into synchronous communication and video calls because people are lonely, they're stuck at home. So it's important to build and keep those connections up. This is not advice that I would normally give a remote team, right? Of course, they need to build those connections too, but on a longer time. So for people that just temporarily work from home, try to lean a lot into synchronous communication because that's very important right now to keep the connections with your colleagues up because it's new to you because you don't know how it's all going out. Right. So be aware that, you know, this is, this is something to be aware of. Async communication on the other hand is very important when you're, um, split or distributed across various time zones. Um, you can use it for a lot of things, you know, um, and it's very, very important for a lot of things to have documented and to have like everything that basically happens in your company kind of in a written or recorded form so that others can check up on it. Um, how I would start with it is maybe just use it for standups. For example, standups are a very good idea because sometimes, you know, synchronous standups, they are not really useful in remote work because of, especially in a sync format, I, I think standups are important to share what you're doing, but, uh, you don't have to do that in a synchronous way because sometimes you can't for some, it's the morning for some, it's the evening, right? So try, try to do your standups in an asynchronous way, write, you know, down what you did, share it with the team, whatever way you want. There's Slack bots, there's documents you can use. Try to do that. This could be, you know, like initial, initial way to test things out, document things, decision that happen, you know, in your team, in your company, um, write them down and sort them into, you know, folders, just so you've got a structure where, where your, where your information lives. Um, another way you could test this out and encourage it is, you know, after meetings, 
don't just go out of the video call and you know that's it try to write up what happened you know if you didn't take notes try to write up a quick line of hey those were the decisions made those are the people that we have to follow up blah 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 and then you know just write it down share it with everyone that was involved and then you have a record of what happened and someone that maybe didn't attend you know can see what happened so just writing those things down is is also quite important um but yeah as i mentioned even in remote teams, we don't just live by async communication. We also have to have video calls, especially me as a manager in one-on-ones, right? Building those connections and um, understanding, you know, what the person is about and connecting with them is important too. So video calls won't go away, but um, they can be less in a certain way. Yeah. All right. Do we still have time? Yeah, we still got time. Um, that's a good like follow-up question, although it's very similar. How do you document changes and decisions being made so all stakeholders are aware? Um, maybe I'll share more practical things that we do at Buffer uh, and won't like repeat the asynchronous communication. Um, of course, you know you, you should write down your decisions and um, all the changes that happen, especially if they're bigger for your company. So they should already be written down, but question here I think is more how you do that um, so we at Buffer we use Dropbox paper um, for basically like meeting notes technical like RFCs um, uh, technical plans how to work on something or like a, a paper where you know all our um, all our uh, design decisions are in so it's more like a short-lived document kind of thing like Google Docs how you would use Google Docs um, then we use Notion for more of our company wiki where we have um, how our vacations, how is our vacation policy, you know, like um, what's, you know, our salary formula and what's our uh, engineering on-call schedule look like. So all those things live in Notion. And um, that's what we use Notion for. And then another thing that's very helpful for async communication, what we use is Threads, T-H-R-E-A-D-S. Um, there's similar tools, for example, like Carrot, I know. I think there's one or two others, Carrot.io. Um, and what they do is basically they replace email for us. So we don't use email anymore. And in Threads, um, because this question is about you know decisions and stakeholders, you have different spaces and you can ping people and involve people like with an ad mention, um, which is nothing specific. But uh, what that helps us with is if you are in a um, in a message on the right, you see the person you pinged and the person that are in that space. If they've seen the message, if they you know haven't seen the message, if they want to follow up. So it gives you kind of, it sets the expectations of like, okay, what's going on? And has that person, you know, seen my message, understood my message. So it kind of helps you to understand, okay, stakeholders saw the message or they didn't, you know, like this visibility of, um, of information is very key. So just check the tools out and you'll see what I mentioned, what I mentioned. Um, okay, we get some live questions here. Uh, okay. Huh? Okay, uh, let's do this one first. Um, hi, Marcus. Below a few questions in my mind. What are the things that lead manager can do to create a good remote culture? How to keep the team members encouraged to work on things flexibly and efficiently? And how to eliminate the communication gap between members and task domains? Whew. Um, got quite a bit in there. Um, I think I answered some of those uh, in the other questions. So maybe you can later go back to the recording. Um, I think the first one, two things that are, I would say, or three things that are very important here is um, you as a manager should be authentic, like be you know yourself and lead by example. I mentioned that before. You have to be, uh, you have to understand yourself in order to you know be a better leader. So be be aware of what you are about, how you react to things, how you work with others. So that's that's an important thing for you to to understand that will ultimately, you know, create a better culture. So be authentic. Um, communication in whatever form, you know, transparent communication, exercise, active listening, um, how to listen well in video calls, but also in writing, you know, like how you do that. Um, 
And last but not least, you know, like create a very safe environment for people to actually bring things up and build those relationships. I think it's important. Um, I'm actually writing a book right now about exactly this topic where it's important, you know, that we work with even right now, I just see avatars, right? I don't see real humans, but we have to understand that behind this avatar, there's always a human and that's the person you have to care about. And that's how you should build up your culture, right? Do care about that. Um, how to keep team members encouraged to work on things flexibly and efficiently. Um, I think I mentioned a few things here. I think enabling the team is very important that the team members in itself build those connections with each other. And um, another thing that's important is that you as a company, but also as a team have a goal, a vision so that everyone is encouraged and motivated to work towards that goal, right? So um, again, transparent communication flows in there. Having a goal that's transparent, that everyone knows what they're doing is very important. Um, how to eliminate the communication gap between members on task requirements, how to eliminate the communication gap between members on task requirements. I think I'd I don't, I, I think if I understand the question correctly, it goes into the over communication topic of like sharing all the context, you know, if like this is a task, don't just write implement this button, you know, like share the resource, where is the design file or where is, you know, the context behind why we are implementing this? Do we have to track any data? Do we have to do anything else? Like be sure that you overshare your contexts and your information around that task. I think that will help with the communication gap there. All right, um, another one here. In a conventional way, I was an intern at the office and used to learn a lot by simply having conversations with experienced engineers. Sometimes I used to listen to their conversations and I got to know many things by these conversations. Now, while working remotely, it's difficult to learn by talking to seniors because you can't talk to them all the time. How I managed to learn those things while working remotely? Very great question. Um, again, same topic about, you know, building relationships and being intentional. Remote work is basically the same thing as work. Just everything has to be more intentional, right? You don't see them when you grab a tea or a coffee. You can't listen to them, right? That's not happening. You mentioned it. So you have to be intentional about recreating that in a, in a virtual team. How can you do that? Um, again, you have to, of course, motivate people to do that. It's not just because you do it, it will happen. But um, you can set the grounds for that in terms of maybe having a water cooler channel in Slack, right? Where people just share random stuff and then from that conversations happen. What we have in um, Buffer or what we tried various things, one was called um, pair calls. Um, there's a bot called Donut Bot um, and you don't have to use that. You can use it or do it in a different way where it basically connects the people in a channel with each other every week randomly. So today I would be paired up with you, Shivam, and next week I would be paired up with someone else. And you can, you know, jump on a call once a week and just chat to them about life. You know, what did you do yesterday? How are your kids? What movie did you watch? What music did you listen to? Just to build a relationship and understand what's going on. Um, you can do this, you know, focused on senior engineers in sense like, Let's just do a weekly engineering catch up or a discussion call, right? Where, you know, people can come online and share a thought and then conversations start to happen or create a channel in Slack if you don't want that in video where people, we have a channel, for example, called engineering learning where people just share what they just learned or what they're trying to learn. And then, you know, from that, people kind of start conversations. So again, in that is a lot of transparent communication and building those relationships. Um, I hope that's, that helps a little bit. Shivam, just let me know if, if that was clear enough. Um, try to be intentional and just, you know, take a step and create a channel in, in your communication tool that you use and, you know, try to ask them, just, you know, go straight at it. Don't, don't be shy. Just ask them to, to, you know, do a weekly chat or just share something that you can engage with it too. All right, I think we got still six minutes left, so we can maybe um, do one more question. So which one do we do? Oh, I'm just hearing from from uh, the coordinators that we can also wrap up the session. So yeah, maybe that feels good. Um, if someone else has more questions or want their question answered, they can probably reach out to me or 
to the tab chief team so we get most of them answered. Um, uh, I had a lot of fun doing this. I think it's always interesting to see what people, you know, ask. Um, I think in this time of uh, new remote work where a lot of people are trying it out in very, because of various reasons, be sure, you know, that you don't forget that you're working with humans that, you know, especially because it's just from one day to the other that you have to understand that, you know, you're maybe not as productive as you would be in an office from day one on. It will come with time. So, yeah, just be just be easy on yourself and and on others. Maybe that's the message I can leave you all with. Um, so, yeah, thank you all for for joining in today and um, answer and asking so many good questions. And um, yeah, just give me a follow on LinkedIn or social um, on the other social media channels like Twitter. Um, so we can we can continue to chat. Awesome. Thank you all.